Kubernetes manages the authorization that's regulating access to resources based on roles through the role-based access control or RBAC for short. Using RBAC, you can dynamically configure policies and control access to the Kubernetes resources. There are four Kubernetes resources related to RBAC, role and cluster role, and role binding and cluster role binding. The role resource contains the rules that represent a set of permissions. The role is defined on the namespace level and the rules only apply within that namespace. The second related resource to role is a cluster role, and this resource can be used to apply the permissions cluster-wide, so across all namespaces. The other couple of use cases for cluster roles are if you are defining rules for cluster scoped resources. An example of a cluster scoped resource is cluster nodes. So you could apply rules for namespaced resources across all namespaces, such as services or all pods in the cluster. And then similarly, you would use a cluster role if you're defining permissions for cluster wide resources or let's say non resource endpoints, such as health Z. So if we continue with the previous example, where we tried to list the pods from within the container, here's how we could define a role called pod reader that grants access uh, to read the pods in the namespace. So let's create a pod reader role file. And I'm just going to paste in the YAML. Now, the API groups uh, under the rules uh, indicates which core API group this role applies to. The empty value means that the rule is going to apply to the core API group. If you want to look at the list of all API groups, uh, we can run kubectl API resources and uh, do a wide output. And I will resize this window a little bit so we can get everything in there. Now, if you look at the API group column, some of these resources don't have the API group set. That means that these resources fall under the core API. So these are services, secrets, service accounts, pods, nodes, namespaces, etc. Some of the other resources have specific API groups set, specifically deployments are in the apps API group, daemon sets, replica sets, stateful sets, and so on. The other column that's interesting here is the verbs column. Uh, so the verbs column uh, corresponds to the HTTP um, to the HTTP verbs that are actually used when the request is being made. So for example, the create verb corresponds to the HTTP post, the get list um, watch verbs correspond to the get HTTP ver verbs and so on. And you'll notice not like some of the resources support different verbs. They don't support all of them either. Now the resource fields down here um, holds the list of resources this rule is going to apply to. Now in our case, we're just setting it to pods, but if we wanted to apply the rules to any other resource, uh, in our case from the, um, from the core API group, we would just do a comma and say services, for example, or uh, uh, let's say config maps. But we only want to apply this to the pods. Now, additionally, there's a, um, there's a field here called resource names, and this is where you can specify the, this, you can define a specific resource. In our case, that would be a specific pod name. Let's say we could say simple pod or whatever the pod name is. You can specify exact resource you want this role to apply to as well. Not just the resource group, but the specific resource. Now, once we have the role created, uh, what you have to do is then you have to use one of the binding resources. In our case, it's going to be role binding resource uh, to actually grant the permissions defined in this role. So listing pods to, uh, to the group of users, or in our case, it's going to be the service account. So let's look at the role binding resource and how does that one look like and how we could write that one. So I'm just going to create a pod reader role binding resource. 
So uh, what this research does is it binds the permissions from the role, or uh, if we were using a cluster role, then from the cluster role, it uh, binds those permissions to users. Now the users in our case uh, is a service account, but th these could also be groups or other service accounts. Uh, here's how the YAML would look like for, uh, for the role binding. And this would actually bind the role called pod reader, the one we have here, to this specific service account called pod reader SA that's running in the default namespace or it's created in the default namespace. Now under the subjects here, we have a single service account, but we could define multiple subjects. So these could either be a service account or users or, uh, or groups. So let's go ahead and start by creating the service account first. So we're going to create a pod reader service account .yaml, and we'll type version v1 and kind is going to be service account and under metadata we'll just provide a name. So we'll say pod reader essay. So we'll save this file and then we'll create the service account with kubectl apply minus f pod reader minus sa dot yaml. So the service account is created. So we'll have the default one. And then we actually have the one that we created right now. So the next uh, step is to create the reader role. So this would be the pod reader role. And we'll do it the same way apply minus f pod reader role dot yaml. And we can list this with kubectl get role. And you'll see there's the pod reader one. And finally, we need to create uh, the role binding that's going to bind the service account uh, with the specific role that we created. And the way you do this is we'll do apply f pod reader role binding dot yaml. Now there's also uh, uh, kubectl commands that you could run directly instead of uh, uh, creating a yaml. So we could say kubectl for example, create a role binding, read pods, and say the role is going to be pod reader, and service account is going to be this, and then just deploy this one. So you don't have to necessarily write YAML, you could just do it directly using the Kubernetes CLI. So let's describe the role binding just to see how it works or how it looks like. Describe role binding, read pods. So the subject is a service account called pod reader SA in a namespace and the role that's being assigned is the pod reader. So let's create the pod now that's going to use this service account. So I'll create a new file here and pod with sa.yaml. And this is just the same pod that we had before. The only difference is uh, this line here where we're explicitly setting the name of the service account we created earlier. So let's apply this file and create the pod YAML. So the pod was created. Let's just make sure that it's up and running. Okay. So now what we can do is we can exec inside this pod like we did before. And then we will store the token in an environment variable. So we don't have to type it. Just make sure that it's there. Yep. And then we can do curl and curl to Let's try to curl to the simple pod directly. So authorization, bearer token, we're specifying the token, and then Kubernetes.default, 443 API, we want namespaces, default pods, and the simple pod. So this does not work. And the reason for this is, is because in our pod reader role, we specified the verb list. So list is allowing us to list the pods, but not necessarily to look at a specific pod detail. So that would be a verb called get. So since we have the list, what we could do is we could just curl to the pods. And in this case, you'll see that we actually get the list of all pods. In our case, that would be a single pod that we have inside the default namespace. So here it is again. So Kubernetes default V1 namespace is default pods. So listing the pods, if we would try to get the namespaces, or we'll list all the namespaces. This is not going to work either. Um, or in our case, listing the just a default namespace. It's not going to work because we don't have that role. Same thing for namespaces. Uh, that's not going to work either.